The end of the season is approaching two months of title runs, cup semi-finals, Champions League finals, and much, much more. But Premier League clubs, clubs across Europe, are already starting to get their transfer work underway at this point. So there will be lots of stories, conversations. There will be agents meeting clubs and vice versa in the coming days, weeks, and months. We are going to report on, on a lot of the stories that come out, give you our opinion on the validity the likelihood, the quality of the player. And of course, we want the same from you. Hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribing as well. And where I wanted to start today was with Chelsea. Now, Chelsea have got a lot of situations that are going on at the moment. And it remains to be seen how much money they genuinely have to spend this summer. There are some Chelsea fans who believe the stories that they will have two to 300 million to invest into their squad this summer. There are others that believe the story that there is this big 100 to 200 million pound FFP sustainability regulation black hole that Chelsea have got to resolve. It doesn't stop the stories from coming in, though. And here there is an update on the highly rated midfielder Sudakov, who has been linked to Liverpool as of late. And now Chelsea reportedly are leading the chase amongst Premier League clubs for the £100 million star. Now, I, my first thought when I saw this was, why? Let's just put aside all the potential problems Chelsea have got with FFP and money. My first thought was, he's 21 turning 22. He's relatively inexperienced. His market value is only 25 million. On what planet do Chelsea need to buy another very young midfielder, another raw midfielder? They just don't. And, and they, I'm not being disrespectful here, Chelsea. I, I feel what I, what the angle I'm coming from is protective of your club for some reason. Chelsea need 24, 25, 26 year old plus players experienced, good value. Still got a lot left in the tank, but are not wet behind the ears. And I read this story and I saw a lot of Chelsea fans sort of quote tweeting it and sharing it. Saying, oh, I hope this is true. It's a great talent. I'm excited about this. First thought I had was why? Why would you be excited about any more young players being signed? unless they are already killing it at a really big club in a really big league already. So if it was Musiala, that's ex-Chelsea, still quite young, but he's killing it at that level, I get it. If Bellingham suddenly hates Real Madrid and wants to join Chelsea, I get it. That would make sense as a young player to sign because of the level they're already at. But a young player still finding his feet in the game who hasn't played football at, the, the the top, top level yet on a European scale. Yes, play Champions League. I'm talking club level, though, domestically. Personally, I think this would be a crazy move. I'd love to get your thoughts, feelings, opinions on this in the comments section below, especially Chelsea fans. Give me your thoughts and feelings. Now, I want to move on to Arsenal because the striker situation at Arsenal has been coming up for a long time. Ivan Tony, Ivan Tony, Ivan Tony. It appears Arsenal fans have gone very quiet on this cold on this do they fancy him at the emirates anymore i'm not too sure i'd love to get arsenal fans opinions in the comment sections below but the first story i saw today speaks about newcastle united striker alexander isak is on arsenal's transfer shortlist as they aim to bring in a forward during the summer now i know he's had some injury problems i know that that would be a concern to a lot of arsenal fans but he's been linked to the club before if you remember a few Januaries ago, a lot of Arsenal fans were running all across London trying to track a car that he was reportedly in. So we've seen the links before. I think Alexander Isak, in terms of talent, goal-scoring ability is excellent. Newcastle seemed to have some FFP issues, so this could be a plausible move. But the injury record, of course, is a big question mark that Arsenal fans are going to pose. The other player now that is it's picking up pace all the time, though, is Jokeris. 
Now, this individual is, I mean, there's there's talk about a hundred million euros release clause, 85 million pounds. There is a serious, serious, serious talent in this individual. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. And what he's been doing at sporting is nothing short of sensational this season. We spoke earlier about Chelsea needing more experienced players. Jukares, although his name has only really been trending in the last 12 to 18 months, he's 25 years of age. He turns 26 in June. So he's of a real good age in terms of development. 22 goals, nine assists in the league so far this year. Five goals and two assists in the Europa League so far this year. And a lot of people are falling over for him. Not just for his goal scoring, but he's good hold-up play. He's good technical ability. He He's good in the approach play as well. So I'm not saying Ivan Tony is off the list. I'm not saying Jukrest is being prioritised as the number one target right now just because a few outlets are saying it. But it does appear that Arsenal may be not as set in their ways on Ivan Tony as they maybe were six months ago. This time last year, all the stories were about Declan Rice, the bolster their midfield. That never changed. He was always number one. He became, you know, one of the best purchases, I think, in their club's history so far. Anyway, he's been absolutely phenomenal. There doesn't appear to be a clear number one at this moment in time when it comes to the strikers. And I understand why. Could Eucharis be a better example, a better um, purchase than someone like Ivan Tony? Or he's looking at that Premier League tried and tested Ivan Tony. The Isaks potentially, are they better options for the money that all of them are going to cost? I'd love to get your views. I'd love to get your opinions in the comment section below. Now, moving up to Manchester, Man United are linked today. And slow down your laughter before I get there. Let me give you my opinion. Man United, alongside another Premier, uh, um, other Premier League clubs, are keeping tabs on Rodrigo and have asked about his transfer situation. Real Madrid view him as non-transferable, even though they're getting Mbappe. So this is one of those stories which is inevitable, but I also think that it is too premature. There is not a... Would I like him at Man United? Yes, I think he's highly talented. Of course, he's at Real Madrid. He's, a, he, he's an integral part of their team. I'd love this to come true this summer at Man United, but it won't. Could it be a player that becomes available in 12, 24 months' time? Potentially. Let's see what happens with Vinicius Jr. I know he's got some issues over in Spain at the moment. Let's see how Mbappe does. I'm sure he's going to kill it. He could find himself with limited game time, limited opportunities inside the next 12 to 18 months. And maybe then Real Madrid look at him as an asset they could sell, that they could capitalize upon, raise additional funds to strengthen another area of the pitch. The player may look at an exit so that he gets regular game time. But I don't think this is a deal that Man United certainly or any other Premier League team is going to have much hope in landing in the summer of 2024. I know what they're doing. They're putting two and two together, but they're getting 39. Yes, Mbappe is coming in. Yes, a few noses might be pushed out of joint. But you have to remember these players believe in themselves. Rodrigo isn't going to sit there and think, oh, well, Mbappe's coming in. I'm never going to kick a ball again. He's probably excited about the Mbappe arrival and what it means for his club. And he's probably relishing the challenge of getting into the first team and playing alongside him on a regular basis. Or even better than that, outperforming him and keeping him out of the team in an idealistic world for him personally, because that'd be great for, for Real Madrid. So I don't think there's any... Listen, Man United and other clubs have probably inquired. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that element is true. You know, Are Real Madrid looking to maybe sell him? Because it's going to be a huge cost to bring Mbappe in this summer. Forget the transfer fee being zero. You're talking about £200 million to bring him in. So the club might be inquiring to see whether or not they do need to sell a player or two. That element could very well be true. But I believe what Real Madrid have said here, that he's viewed as untransferable. I don't think it's going to happen this summer. So Man United fans, because obviously you're linked to this story, I would not be getting excited about this at this particular moment in time. But viewers, as ever, do me a big favor and hit the like button. Check out the squad. The content's coming soon. Can't wait. Can't wait to bring you the new content over there. New look, everything. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely tip top when we start. So get all of that done. Leave us your comments below and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Peace.